Today I'm wondering, why don't people think? Do people think? Do you think? I love thinking. It's the best thing. Do you love thinking? That's what I want to know. We give attention to what we think is relevant. What do you think is relevant? What if nothing is relevant? Do you ever wonder that? Is anything worth thinking about? How do we determine what is relevant? Relevance has to do with value. And what I want to know today, what do you value? Do you know what you value? Is thinking relevant? Do you value thinking? But valuable for what? Value is for something else, right? Value thinking for itself or value thinking for something else? Do you suspect that thinking is futile? Why would someone think thinking is futile? Notice we can't avoid thinking. I keep saying the word thinking. What is thinking? It's an activity of the mind. We do it all the time. You're doing it right now. We can do it more or less well. And you need to be trained to think well. It doesn't come naturally. That's what education is about. Training comes from education. That's my job. I think that the activity of right thinking is, most, is the most relevant human activity there is. I also think that the majority of people don't agree with me about that. I think that the world's problems, all the world's problems, and there are many of them, are due to the failure of right thinking. What do you think about that? Is that controversial? I think we can fix all the world's problems by right thinking too. What do I mean by right thinking though? By right thinking, I mean thinking critically about basic beliefs, basic issues, thinking critically about our own basic beliefs. What if people are going around with basic beliefs that are meaningless, that are nonsense? Wouldn't that lead to bad actions? I think it would. I'll save the discussion about right thinking for another day. Today we want to talk about what is blocking people from thinking. It doesn't seem to be an activity we value very much. Why don't people see thinking as relevant? Why do they lack love or devotion to thinking? Perhaps our, mis our love is mis misplaced. Mm. Perhaps our love is misplaced. Have you spent your eros, your passion, on something less than the good? If you've spent your eros on something less than the good, perhaps you're cynical now. And are you cynical because you thought you would find meaning and you have not found meaning? Maybe you were looking in the wrong place. Maybe you're going about it in the wrong way. Maybe you let pleasure be your guide rather than letting thinking be your guide. But it's not too late to try again. Here we go. Let's go try to find meaning. Lack of love or not seeking can be a major block to thinking. So can double-mindedness. Do you know what that is? Double-mindedness is like you're one person, but you have two minds. And if you have two minds, you have two directions. You're going in two directions at the same time. It's being divided against yourself. That's highly uncomfortable, right? So how do we resolve double-mindedness? Well, we need to figure out what the good is and not pursue two different goods or many different goods. We need one good. We need to be unified in ourselves, like we talked about, a harmony of the soul. One good for one person. So don't be double-minded. This is a lack of integrity to be double-minded. Okay, what else can block us from thinking? Skepticism and fideism are both major blocks to thinking. Do you know what skepticism is? Skepticism says there's nothing that's clear to reason, uh, nobody can be sure about anything, and fideism has the same assumption, nobody can really be sure about anything, but they add you just have to believe anyway. So it's belief without understanding or proof. It's a blind leap. So skepticism and fideism share the assumption that nothing is clear to reason. But why should we believe that? Where did that belief come from? It's an assumption 
And it's an assumption many of us have picked up along the way, perhaps in our education, perhaps through religion, perhaps it's in the air we breathe. So we should question those assumptions, skepticism and fideism. I wrote a couple books on this topic, if you're interested in reading more. I know people don't read, that's why I'm making these videos, but just in case you become a reader, those books are out there. What else can be blocks to our thinking? Pride and sloth can be blocks to thinking. Pride is thinking that we already know. Think about that. If you already know, can you be in a position of being a learner? No, you already know it. You don't need to be taught. And perhaps we don't know. So it takes humility to be a learner. Sloth is, well, this is a deep topic. We can spend a whole uh, 20 minutes on this topic, but sloth is a kind of laziness. And it may lead to an attitude, oh, I'll just go with the flow. And going with the flow is a, a passive approach to life. Many of us are going with the flow right now, right? I'm just gonna take the easy way and see what happens. Um, these two approaches have been uh, discussed in wisdom literature. And the, the one who thinks they know, but they don't know is called the fool. And the one who thinks they don't need to know is called the simple. And these two are contrasted with the wise person. And I want you to be a wise person. So don't go the way of the fool, oh, I already know, or the way of the simple, oh, I don't need to know. I'm just gonna go with the flow. Going with the flow is gonna lead to disaster because you don't have a paddle and you're going downstream and there's a water flow at the bottom of the stream and you're gonna suffer. And when you suffer, then you're gonna have to learn uh, the hard way. And so uh, maybe just start learning now, maybe embrace thinking as an alternative. I want you to be a wise person. Then we can be friends. I'm looking for wise people to hang out with. Okay, what are some other blocks to thinking? Busyness, I'm too busy to think. Why are you so busy? What are you filling your time with? Are you filling your time with amusement? Probably, right? Do you need those cat videos? Mm, I don't think so. Do you need that many video games? I don't think so. So we're spending our time often in excess and the excess is because we're bored. So guess what's a, a, an antidote to boredom? Thinking. Uh, maybe uh, something like distractions are keeping you from thinking. Put your screens away for a time. You know, I walk into my classroom and I see everybody on their little screen looking at their phone. What are you doing there? Are you thinking while you're on that screen? Well, you're on a screen right now and hopefully you're thinking. I'm not gonna say maybe, maybe you are, maybe you're learning. Um, okay, perhaps a lack of discipline is keeping you from thinking. Well, what is discipline? Uh, discipline is doing the hard thing even when you don't want to and when you have discipline the hard thing that you didn't want to do perhaps because some becomes something that you really do want to do later like studying studying takes discipline right time management actually focusing your mind and attention for more than five minutes or five seconds maybe we have a lack of training that's keeping us from thinking I have a suspicion this is a big piece uh, we don't know how to think, we don't know what is relevant, so we don't know what to focus on. There's so many things that we're exposed to, so much information out there, it's overwhelming, it causes anxiety. Well, that's why we get a teacher. Okay, I think also bad thinking or false assumptions keeps us from thinking well. So we need to learn how to think so that we can spot what bad thinking is and what good thinking is. So what can we do about all of these blocks? How can we start thinking well? Well, I think we can start with a desire to seek to know what is true and good. So do you want to know? And if you want to know, have you taken the steps to pursuing it? What are those steps? First, acknowledge you have a problem. I don't like thinking and now say, but I want to like thinking and then start thinking. Find a teacher. Uh, begin to grow in your understanding by connecting the dots. Did you know that everything can be connected? Yes, you need to start thinking about that and use your imagination a little bit. You can live your life for the good. The good is knowledge of the highest things. 
So live your life for that. And you can also be virtuous. Virtue is a means to the good. And the theory is, uh, if you know the good, you'll do the good. So do you want to do what is good and what is right? It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a disconnect if you say you want to know the good, but you don't want to do the good. Maybe you're being double-minded again, right? Get rid of distractions from your life. You know, they talk about simplifying life. Simplify your mind. What are you putting in there? And you know, it might stay forever, whatever you put in there. So put good things in your mind and get the distractions out. How about this? Get a teacher who can help you with discipline. Uh, to be a, a disciple, discipulos, is to be a learner. So students are disciples and they're learners. So you need to learn discipline by someone holding you accountable. And that's what teachers are for. It might be helpful to pray for grace. I know, right? Who's going to talk about prayer in an academic setting? Hey, try it. And how about this? Take baby steps. Sometimes we aim for perfection, we fail, and we give up. How about don't aim for perfection, aim for baby steps of improvement. Little by little, knowledge adds up. Little by little, being disciplined adds up. So start small. Start today. And next time, I'll have more things for you to think about.